Yo, what is up guys? Anthony Booty Tran here with another episode with Solar Tradecraft. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can safely send money to China without getting screwed over. And this actually question comes from someone from my Vietnamese audience, right? So if you guys didn't know, I was most out recently out in Vietnam on a trip to speak at a couple conferences out in Vietnam. Shout out to the FBA Avengers uh, group for hosting me out there. But basically, it's funny how things come full circle and now like I'm doing business in Vietnam, the country where my parents are from. And you know, it's my third time there ever, third time seeing my family there ever. And you know, it's a real humbling experience to just experience different cultures. And that's what I love about hands on. I can work from anywhere, I can live from anywhere. But anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about you and how you can safely send money to Asia. So when dealing with any suppliers, what you got to understand first of all is payment terms. So when it comes to payment terms, paying a supplier, what that means is how you pay a supplier. So payment terms, standard payment terms, are normal business practices is you pay a 30% deposit, right, for to start the production of your goods. And then you pay the 70% remaining balance, right, after the production is complete, but before you ship it to Amazon. Okay, before it gets shipped to you. Let's break down on best practices on how to pay your deposit, right? So paying the deposit is different from paying the 70% remaining balance. So if you're working for a factory for the first time or you're working with a new supplier, what you wanna do in best practices to protect yourself is pay the 30% deposit with PayPal. Sometimes a supplier might say no, but if you really insist, they should say yes. Most suppliers will accept it, right? So the way it works is you're going to pay with PayPal for your deposit with a credit card through PayPal. Why do I say that? So first of all, if you get screwed, you contact PayPal and you're like, hey, PayPal, this supplier did not give you my goods, la la la, dispute happens, they give you your money back. If PayPal doesn't give you your money back, then you file a dispute with your credit card company. When you file a dispute with your credit card company, they always give you your money back, generally unless you always do chargebacks, then I don't know. But so basically, those two ways, right? PayPal and then your credit card company, you can do disputes through both of them to get your money back. Okay, and that's how you pay your 30% deposit. But one thing you want to keep in mind is if you pay your deposit with PayPal, with PayPal, a lot of suppliers will generally put the put the PayPal fee on you. So for them to receive money from PayPal, they can pay anywhere, I think it's from four to like 6%. So it's generally common for them to pass that on that expense to you by charging you an extra four or six percent for your goods so it's totally normal but for peace of mind and safety for you as a new seller or starting with a new supplier it is okay to pay this four or six percent just to get it started and build a relationship right moving forward in the future you can pay it by wire transfer or you can you know ask to split the fee or however you arrange it with the supplier right so that's another pro tip see if you can split the fee with their supplier be like hey can we split three percent three percent two percent two percent however it works right so just talk and negotiate the Chinese like haggling if you're doing business in China if you've been doing any business in Asia in general you gotta haggle that's just how it works next all right so we got the deposit cover now we got to worry about the 70 percent so the 70 percent is the remaining balance of your goods right so because you put the deposit down the production has started production has started production has started and then now production is complete so this is when you pay the 70 percent but but first thing you got to do is get an inspection done all right this there's probably going to be a whole video about this but just to kind of recap it real quick and uh in general if you guys ever need access to an inspection company that i use go ahead and check in it in the links below everything is always attached in the crafting guide if you guys haven't heard about the crafting guide before highly recommend you guys access it access it because it has you know access to all my fright forwards that i use all the graphic designers that i use all of the yeah fright forwards graphic designers listing optimization people i use any tools that i use that are in my toolkit all the coupons for those tools like it has everything inside that document so i highly highly recommend it you check it out it has all my little pro tips and everything anyway segue back inspection company so you know make sure they do like a drop test you know make sure your item doesn't break from three feet make sure the packaging looks correct make sure you know like you know it's printed the way you want it uh, an inspection company will check for all this but you have to tell them to what to look for too also right they'll check for the standard things you have to tell them what to look for make sure there's a thousand units there if you order a thousand units 
okay? And then, you know, you wanna make sure the barcodes are right, the FBA labels on the outside of the boxes are right, make sure they palletize their product correctly, make sure the wrap is correct, you know, depending on the way they do it. Just make sure the paperwork's correct and all the certifications are in order. And then inspection companies should generally help you with that. And all the listed trusted inspection companies that I have in the comments, check them out and they'll help you guys out. But other than that, what you guys also want to check out for is, yeah, the inspection companies and then 70%. Okay, so once the inspection company checks it and they're happy to go with everything, what you're gonna do is send a wire transfer. Wire transfer, super normal standard business practice uh, when sending money to suppliers in Asia. Definitely, if a supplier tells you to send money by like MoneyGram or like one of those weird services that are at your grocery store, do not do that. Send it by wire transfer, that's normal business practice, right? A wire transfer is when you send money from your bank account to your supplier's bank account. And you know, so you just go into your local bank account. The first time you do it, you're probably gonna have to do it in person, but make sure you ask them in the future to set you up for online wire transfers. Because I'll tell you right now, I personally hate going to my local bank. There's always a wait time, kind of smells, I don't know, people there aren't like really happy and I just rather personally not have to drive, right? I mean, that's why we're in this business because we can work from anywhere. So if you want to work from anywhere, definitely <laughs> detach yourself from physically going to bank and set up wire online wire transfers, right? Pro tip right there. You're going to go into bank and then you're going to have to make sure you get all the information from your supplier, right? So you're going to need like the SWIFT code, the account number, their name, the address, bank's address, and then description of the goods, and then the amount to send, right? And then you got to make sure if it's you're sending money in USD or some other currencies like Hong Kong dollars, RMB, whatever it is, okay? And then, so you go to the bank, fill out the paperwork, and please, please, please fill out the paperwork correctly. Because when I fill out the paperwork, so I'll tell you a story about this past uh, uh, quarter three, right? right? So right before quarter four, I sent money. I went to the bank because I was sending 100 grand to one of my suppliers. And... <laughs> And normally I don't send that much, uh, right? But it was Q4 and I, I had a big shipment to send to this one supplier and so I had to order like a lot of inventory. So normally I do it online, but you know, for security reasons, they made me come in person to send an amount that high. So I went to the bank, went into the bank and then uh, gave them all my paperwork and then, you know, all the names are in like Chinese or anything. So nothing really looks familiar. You can't just really read it and know if there's a typo off the bat. So you gotta check each individual letter. So I didn't double check and triple check the guy that inputted my information in and that's my fault, right? Do not blame anyone else, it's your fault, you have to double check it and triple check it. And he accidentally, well I didn't catch him mixing an I and A like backwards. So it was just basically one type of difference, okay? And that in itself made me have a hundred grand that was missing in limbo, okay? My hundred grand was in limbo for like three, four weeks and I was stressed out, I was scared, but I'm an optimistic person, I knew everything would work out, and everything worked out like it always does, thank God. So that worked, And but basically what I had to do is I had to get a man, do a lot of paperwork, contact their bank, contact my bank, and then next thing you know, the money came back into my account, thank God. I had to pay another wire transfer fee to send the money again, and wire transfer fee to get the money back, but it's better than use, losing 100 grand, right? Uh, so please, please, if there's anything you take away from this video, it's double, triple, quadruple check the wire transfer uh, amount that you send to Asia. Make sure you don't add an extra zero. Make sure you know the type, there's no typos. But in general, if you're sending from a US company, wire transfer fees can be anywhere from like 25 to $45. My fees are $45, so you pay $45. Pretty normal. It shouldn't be higher than $45. If it's lower, it's like usually because you have like a special checking account or a business account or I don't know, you just get hooked up somehow and I don't get to hook up. So if you guys know a hookup for less wire transfer fees amounts, then let me know. But yeah, that's how you send your money, right? So PayPal, right, for the 30% and then wire transfers for that 70% remaining, right? And that's how the safest way to do it. And like I said, do not send that 70% rebalance until you're 100% sure the goods are like how you want it and they're on their way to Amazon. Other things that I want to let you know. So there's four other ways that people send money to that are like common but not as common too. So let me explain those to you so you guys are aware of them and you guys can move on to these. Uh, there are like more advanced tricks for like more advanced sellers once you're sending like a little bit more money. The first one isn't really, but so Alibaba Trader Shirts, Beam, Ward First, and then Payoneer, right? So Alibaba Trade Assurance basically 
I wouldn't say it's uh, is advanced, but it's more beginner actually. Most suppliers generally don't like using this because then Alibaba takes a fee versus PayPal. But Alibaba Trader Shirts, it's pretty nice. It's a good way to get started with working with any supplier. I would generally keep using it if the supplier like offers it. But most suppliers I found don't offer this and I've only used it once personally. The way it works is with Alibaba Trader Shirts is you wire money to Alibaba and then Alibaba will wire money to them once you're happy with it. And once you're happy with your goods and everything. So that's all it is. Alibaba uh, Trader Shirts, it helps you protect your money and of course all of our trade insurance is like very reputable company like you can trust them like you should be fine with them Alibaba is like one of the biggest companies in China Alibaba could be the biggest company like soon like I don't know they're crazy but you probably use Alibaba as a search engine so you're familiar with Alibaba but so the other ones you may not have heard of are Beam, Word First and then Payoneer so depending if your supplier has accounts set up with them then you can send money to them through these services and hit minimal fees right especially if you're sending the same currency right so USD to USD so it generally works better for like the, my viewers that are like you guys are American because we usually send USD USD all the time and usually people in China always want USD but if you're using those other services and you're sending money from like say British pounds to USD or USD to RMB or USD to like Hong Kong dollars or something like that then there's going to be fees on top of the money you're sending and it may not be worth it. So those three companies like Word First, Payoneer and Beam make their money on conversion rates, right? Whenever money is converted between different dollars. So that's where those companies make their money. But if you're sending generally like the same amount, the same currency, then you're going to be good to go and the fees are going to be on that are going to be very, very minimal. So what I'm talking about is like, you want to check out Beam. Um, like I know like Nick and Fernando are really big fans of using Beam. They went from like paying like five thousand dollars in wire transfers fees every single month to basically almost nothing because they're using Beam, right? To a couple hundred dollars because the fees are so small because they're not doing conversions, right? And using like Beam and Payoneer and Word First, uh, by the way, I know with Payoneer at least you can use it to pay like your VAs too. You can send it to them that way. And it's easier to send money through there than through PayPal sometimes because of the fees that they tax on. So keep that in mind too whenever like looking for VAs and whatnot. But just to recap everything that we just just explained to you. All right, thirty percent deposit is going to be PayPal. Seventy percent is going to be wire transfer. All right, cool. So if you guys both said that before I said that, then you guys are good to go, and that's best practices. But like always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please, 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 please give me a thumbs up, right? And please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It lets me know that I'm doing things right and, and it makes me want to make more videos, right? So if you guys want me to make more videos, leave it in the comments below and tell me what you guys want me to make videos about, all right? Cool. Other than that, you guys have a great day. See ya.